What is the first thing that comes to your mind if you think of Stephen King? Well, it might be his famous horror books, but in fact, Stephen King also wrote other stuff. For example, the famous story The Body from 1982, which four years later became a movie, Stand By Me. This famous film tells the story of four boys, Gordy, Chris, Teddy and Vern, who set out to find the body of Ray Brower, a boy from the neighboring village who is missing for days. The boys start their journey hoping to become famous in their village, but then everything turns out completely differently than expected and Stand By Me becomes a moving coming of age story with a lot of beautiful nature shots. Today it is time to do a little road trip to show you where exactly this famous movie has been filmed. And there is one thing I can already promise, there will be a lot of railroad bridges in this video. <laughs> Okay, my USA road trip is slowly coming to an end. But before it's really over, we're gonna have a very long car ride. From California, I'm still in Napa Valley, to Oregon, to a small village called Brownsville, to be precise, because that's the village where most of the scenes of the famous movie Stand By Me have been filmed. Most of the scenes. Before we go there, we will go to Shasta Trinity National Forest, which is still in California, but also four and a half hours away from here. And that's the place we should find the famous bridge uh, the boys are running across and almost got hit by a train. If we will find it, I don't know, let's see. Uh, let's go to Shasta Trinity, four and a half hours, let's hit the road. <laughs> And here it is, the famous bridge, a scene I've seen so many times on television while I was a child. And now I'm here. Yeah, I would say let's have a closer look at this famous bridge and let's see what we can discover here. If you compare the movie scenes with the reality, we can see the place I'm standing right here is actually the wrong side of the bridge. The boys were walking from the other side to the place I'm standing right now, not the other way around. We can see that if we take a closer look at this bridge. In the movie scene we can see this bridge has some longer beams on the left side. These beams are still here in reality, but they are on the right side. So that means that we are actually on the wrong side of the bridge. It would also be possible to go to the other side, but of course we can't go over the bridge <laughs> and it's a bit more complicated to get to the other side so that's why I decided to visit this end of the bridge. However there are a few scenes we can compare also from this side. For example we can have a closer look at the bridge itself which looks like this. In reality it looks basically exactly the same like in the movie. The only thing that has changed there's a lot of graffiti on the bridge today with a lot of references 
to the movie Stand By Me. And for some fans, this bridge also seems to be some kind of a memorial for the actor River Phoenix, who passed away a few years after the movie has been released. In this scene you can see the train coming and in this scene you also see this huge embankment in the background and if you take a really close look you can still see that in reality even though there is much more forest than in the past. The boys are super scared because the train is coming and this scene has been filmed at exactly the place I'm standing right now. What we can see is obviously in the past there also used to be some kind of a road or something like that. It looks quite sandy right next to the railroads um, which is still here today. But also in this scene you can see the nature really has changed. There are a lot more trees today 37 years later. And what we also will find on this side of the bridge is this scene over here when the boys jump from the bridge into the dust that has been filmed right at this place. Okay, now I showed you the scenes and if you are wondering now why the heck is this bridge so abandoned today and where the heck are those railroad tracks you can still see in the movie, well, there is actually a quite interesting story behind it. Those railroad tracks belonged to a railroad line called MacLeod River Railroad. It was founded in 1897 and as you can see here in this area there is a lot of forest. So there were also a lot of timber companies here and they used this MacLeod River Railroad to bring materials and wood from point A to point B. That's why those railroads have been built here and that's why also this bridge has been built here. However, in the 1990s the owner of this railroad line changed and in the 2000s it stopped operating because operations were no longer profitable. For a few years there was still some kind of a tourist train driving on those railroad tracks but also that train stopped operating in the year 2010 and since that day those railroad tracks are basically abandoned and not only that the railroad tracks also have been removed. If we take a look on Google Street View a few years ago they still used to be here you can see that here on those old recordings but today those tracks are gone. Today, by the way, those old railroad tracks are actually a walking path, the Great Shasta Rail Trail. So if you want to do a little hike, then you can walk through that area where also the four boys of Stand By Me were walking around. What is still here, however, is this quite special looking ground also the four boys are standing on. As I already told you, we are here in the Shasta Trinity National Forest, which has its name from Mount Shasta, which is a volcano. And this red ground you can see here in the movie scene and also in reality is actually volcanic rock. That's why it looks so red. Well, and before we leave this famous place, there is still one last fun fact I want to tell you about this famous bridge. The movie Stand By Me was not the only production that has been filmed right at this place. Also, a music video has been shot right here. The video of the song Living On The Edge by Aerosmith. It was a very bad green screen production. However, the nature scenes that you can see in that music video have been filmed right here at the famous Stand By Me Bridge. Okay, that was a quite successful start for the movie location tour. Uh, the next place on the list might be a bit more tricky. It's the scene where you can see the boys walk down a railroad track. Well, you can see that a lot of times in the movie, I know. <laughs> and most of those railroad track scenes were also filmed in Oregon, where we are going later. But there is one quite special scene that has been filmed in Chester Trinity uh, National Forest. And that's the scene where you can see the boys walk down the track. On the left side, you can see a huge water tower or whatever that is. Um, that tower obviously has been torn down a few years ago. I've read that on the internet. I don't know if that's true. And I also don't know the exact location of that scene. But I found the railroad track. So that's the place we are going next. And uh, let's see if this place at least looks a little bit like in the movie scene. <laughs> Meter 
Metern rechts abbiegen. Danach haben sie ihr Ziel erreicht. Okay. Mitten im Wald. Hier, hier können wir parken. Sie haben ihr Ziel erreicht. Ach du heiliger, ach du heiliger Bimbam, guck dir das mal an. Wir stehen mitten auf der ehemaligen Bahntrasse. Oh, wie geil ist das denn? I can't believe how beautiful this place is. Have you ever heard of Shasta Trinity before? I didn't. <laughs> But look at this. Or listen to it. You don't hear anything. You only hear a few birds. Only the wind. Some traffic in the distance, okay. But it's such a quiet place. There are no tourists here. There were only a few cars on the road. Obviously, I'm the only one that has ever heard about Chester Trinity. I don't know. Whatever. And this is the famous railroad track. Look at this. Isn't that great? And the best thing is, also the rails are still here. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? That's not the only thing I found here. I also found this famous scene from the movie Stand By Me. It was a bit tricky, but then I found the GPS data of this place and I just had to walk a few hundred meters into the forest. And well, that's how it looks like today. And what we can see here is the water tower that we all know from the movie Stand By Me is gone. Only the wooden framework is still here, but the tower itself is gone. So, what kind of construction is this actually? This is the so-called Bartel Water Tower. Bartel is a village nearby, and this water tower was used for steam locomotives, because they need water from time to time. That's why this tower is standing right here in the woods. This railroad track you see here is still the MacLeod River Railroad track, just at a different place. So there were a lot of steam locomotives driving up and down the forest day after day. However, we can already see in the movie from 1986 that the water tower isn't in its best condition anymore. It's leaking, it doesn't really look that good anymore. So in the year 2020, the tower was so dilapidated that they finally demolished it. So I'm basically three years too late, which is a bit sad, to be honest. However, it's still a very special feeling to stand at this famous place. If we take a closer look at this scene, also here we can see the nature around the water tower has changed a lot. The water tower itself today is surrounded by trees and also all the trees you can see in the background are much bigger today than they used to be 37 years ago. And this is the reverse shot of the scene. We have a beautiful look right into the forest. The railroad tracks are gone today but we have this beautiful hiking trail and actually you can walk from this place over here from the water tower to the famous bridge we just saw. So you could actually do exactly the same tour like the boys from Stand By Me or the other way round. Can I give you the keys back? Sure. Yeah. 
Okay, day number two of my Stand By Me car ride begins. Today we're going from Mount Shasta to Oregon. Uh, according to Google Maps, there will be a lot of nature again along the route. And the more important thing, it takes five hours to get there. Well, let's do it. Um auf Nordmain Street zu bleiben, dann befindet sich das Ziel auf der rechten Seite. Das Ziel befindet sich auf der rechten Seite. Okay, here we are in Brownsville. Or should I say in Castle Rock? <laughs> Yeah, this is the famous village where most of the town scenes of the movie Stand By Me have been filmed. I would say, let's try to reconstruct them. Yeah, let's start with the opening scene of the movie Stand By Me, the first scene where you can see Castle Rock. In this scene, Gordy buys a magazine in a shop on the left side of the street, then he walks down the sidewalk and the camera pans to the right and we can see a lot of Castle Rock in this scene. And uh, the funny thing about this is we have some kind of a double time warp here, <laughs> because in the movie you can see a town from the 1980s, but with some sets from the 1950s, because Stand By Me plays in the year 1959, for example those old cars parked on the side of the road. Whatever, I hope you're ready for the big moment. This is how Castle Rock, or Brownsville, looks like today, 37 years later. What we can see here is the buildings on the left side, also the shop, the comic shop where Gordy buys the magazine, have a different color today. There is also in the movie scene some kind of a green meadow on the right side in the background of the picture. That's not here anymore. Today there is a house, so it seems like they built a few houses here in Brownsville within the past 37 years. But if you take a look at the background, the house on the left side is still here, which looks a bit like a saloon or something like that. And also the building on the right side is still here, just like in the movie. And in reality, we can also see a house on the right side of the road. Uh, I'm not really sure if this house used to be here 37 years ago, because there is a car standing right in front of it. So unfortunately, we cannot compare that. The camera pans to the right, Gordy walks down the street, and on the right side of the street, we can see a house in the movie that still exists. Yeah, this house is still here, even though it has a different color. And also there are a few more trees right in front of this house that were not here 37 years ago. Also in this scene we can see this building and here we can see there used to be some kind of a supermarket, small market or something in this building over here. And this is how it looks like today in reality. There is still a small shop in this building. It's not a supermarket anymore, it's an antique shop. And what is also quite funny, you can still see the fire escape stairs that you can see in the movie Stand By Me. They are still here, but they are totally overgrown with ivy. Yeah, and in this scene we can see Castle Rock in all its glory. And the most iconic thing from this village might be this tower in the background, which looks a bit like a church tower. Well, it's not. In this building there is a gym today. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. There is a gym inside this historic building. Doesn't look like that from the outside, but yeah, that's the reality. In the past, this used to be a women's auxiliary club, or at least in the movie it used to be a women's auxiliary club, because we can see this building in close-up also in this scene from the movie Stand By Me. Right next to this tower building, there is another shop, which used to be a children's clothing shop in the past or in the movie. I don't really know what it is today, some kind of a souvenir shop or something like that. And on the right side in reality we have a shop for knitwear and on the top floor obviously there is a hotel or something or an apartment or something like that. Unfortunately we cannot really see what this building used to be in the past uh, when they shot the movie but it seems like a clothing store or something like that. Let's walk a few meters down the road. In this scene we can see Chris, he's sitting in the back of a truck and then he meets with Gordy on the sidewalk. 
In this scene we can see there are two buildings in the background that are still here today. In the movie they don't have any logos or something like that. Now in reality the building on the left side is a photo museum and the building on the right side is a coffee store. And then Gordy and Chris walk down the street and also in this scene we can see a building on the left side that is still here today in reality. But one thing is quite funny, I don't know if you have noticed that, but in the movie if you take a look at the street there are absolutely no road markings on the street. Not in this scene, but also not in all the other scenes I just showed you. And I don't know why, to be honest. Did they remove those road markings for the movie to make it look a bit more like the 1950s? Because in the 1950s there were no road markings on the streets? Or was it normal in the 1980s that you didn't have any road markings in smaller villages. Actually, I don't think so, but if you are from America and know a little bit about American traffic, maybe leave a comment down below. Would be really interesting to know. Let's go back to the sidewalk. Gordy and Chris are running right around this corner over here and we can see a building on the left side that is still here today in reality. However, there is a small garden right next to this building that obviously was not here while they shot the movie. And another thing is interesting, on the right side of the picture in the movie we can see a house which looks a bit damaged. There's also a very old car right in front of it. This house is gone today. There is this church you can see in the background, but it seems like there was a house standing right in front of this church and obviously they demolished it. In this scene we can see Gordy and Chris right in front of a pub building and also this building is still here and it looks like this today. Well, and right next to the pub building there is another pub, the pub where the older guys play billiard, then they come out of the door and then they bully Chris and Gordy and they steal uh, Gordy's cap. All that happened over here, even though it doesn't really look like it, because the pub looks totally different today. They covered the windows with this funny wood style, if you see that, but it's exactly the same location and we can see that in a different scene. In this scene right here we can see the guys standing right in front of the window and this is how it looks like today in reality. We can see today this pub has this wood design and also the windows are covered with this wood <laughs> design. But there is still one thing that does exist, that's the sign on the door that says no minors. It looks almost like the sign that you can see in the movie. Well, and there is another funny story about this sign you can see here in the movie, Urbis. That's the name of the pub in the movie. In reality, the name of the pub is not Urbis. However, the sign you can see here in the window still exists. And how do I know that? Well, I met Mary while I was walking around here. She works in this pub right here and they kept this sign for the past 37 years. Isn't that great? But well, that's not the only great thing Mary showed me when I entered the pub. Because in the backyard of the house, we will find the next famous shooting location. This is the Blue Point Diner on the door still. I believe. Yeah, it yeah. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a minute. I mean, I see it every day, so I don't think about it. Yeah, that every day so, oh yeah blue point diner yeah that's so great <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah I, you know right from in the corner or somewhere there uh, right they, around they here is where the they gun. shot the, gu yeah, the right, trash right. can yeah yeah that's great. shot down the alley <laughs> yep <laughs> and so um have you been here while the movie was shot uh, at that time or i lived here but i wasn't well i lived in the area yeah but not here my sister-in-law Ex sister on out. She uh, was like in the bleachers when yeah. they did the pie eating and yeah, all yeah. the barfing That's went on. So yeah, my sister in law Lori Rob was there. Okay. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. But yeah. But is this a huge thing in the town? It's or? still huge. Yeah. Every year we have a so thing. So there are more people like me coming. Oh, huge thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huge thing. Every year people come and we do a thing every year on the anniversary and yeah. show the movie down in the park on a big screen oh, no, it's like it's yeah so yeah so yeah it's really fun 
Well, what Merry means is the so-called Stand By Me Day, which is celebrated every year in Brownsville on the 23rd of July. Then a huge party is going on here in the village and also the film is shown once again. The people here in Brownsville have a very close connection to this film because around 100 people were cast here back in the day as background actors and the most funny situation obviously was the blueberry pie scene with lard as you know which was also filmed here in the village okay but now let's get back to the shooting location mary just showed me and let's talk about the door we can see in the movie blue point diner is written on it and yes there is still a door with the name blue point diner on it but as you can see here it's a different door. It's not the same door like in the movie. And the reason for that is that the Blue Point Diner we can see in the movie changed its location. We can also see that on the other side of the road. Here we can see the Blue Point Diner is behind the two guys. And today, 37 years later, the Blue Point Diner is two houses down the road, which means this is not the same door. The trash can scene, however, was shot in this corner over here and I really didn't notice that while I was standing right in front of it. It was a bit confusing, so I had to double check that on Google Street View. But this is exactly the corner they have filmed it. And in the past, there used to be two windows right beside the Blue Point Diner door and they are gone today. That's why it looks so different. What doesn't look different today, however, is this scene, the reverse shot of the scene. Gordy and Chris are running away from the bar lady. And here we can see actually everything still looks the same. There is still this church tower in the background and also the buildings on the right side still look the same. They obviously removed a chimney pipe or something on the building on the right. You see that? Yeah, but everything else basically looks the same. And what do we see at the end of this famous Brownsville road? We can see another famous bridge. <laughs> this time it's the bridge you can see at the end of this movie when the kids come home. Yeah, and this is how the bridge looks like today in reality. And a typical American school bus drives by. That's exactly how I remember the USA from all of my favorite movies great but yeah this road is actually quite busy so i couldn't stand here on the street for like half an hour to compare the scenes uh, i took a quick picture and on this picture we can see pretty well preserved right absolutely nothing has changed here within the past 37 years the bridge still looks exactly the same the houses in the background are still the same even the power poles and lanterns in the background are still the same the only thing that's really different are those road markings that are missing in the movie scene this bridge also plays a role in some other scenes, for example in this one right here. In the background we can see the river and also the forest. And it seems like they have changed the fence of the bridge. It looked totally different in the past, but everything else still looks the same. Yeah, and right after the bridge scene, we're back in the village. At this road crossing, to be precise, all the directions that they show you in the movie in this village are totally correct. There is no fake at all. Over here in that street, there is Vern's house. And this house over here is Teddy's house. And here's the proof. Vern is standing right in front of this house over here. And yes, this house still exists today. It's a bit greener here today. There are a lot more trees today than in the past. And they also changed the road sign on the left side right next to Vern. There are actually two signs today that say do not enter. Those signs were not here while they shot the movie. In this scene we can see a little bit more of the house. We can see today it has a different color, also some new windows. And there is also another house right behind Teddy's house. We can see that in the movie scene. We can't see that anymore today because there are so many trees standing around this house. And also the barn or whatever that is on the right side of the house looks a bit different today. Maybe they have demolished it and rebuilt it or something, uh, it looks a bit different in the movie scene. 
This is the reverse shot. Vern is walking down the street that has been filmed from over here. In this scene, you might remember it, he finds a penny. And the funny thing is, in Brownsville, they embedded a penny right here in the street. Uh, I didn't notice that while I was here, so I can't show it to you, unfortunately. And I also think it's a quite strange idea to do that here in the middle of the street because this really is a quite busy road you shouldn't stand on that street for too long uh, however it's a quite funny idea what we can see in this scene is the house on the right side still exists i already showed you that in a different scene and also the house on the left side still exists that we can see right here right next to Vern. and there is also still a water hydrant right at this place but it's at a different location and also the power pole we can see here in the movie scene moved. And this is the last scene I want to show you from this place right here. And this is where the street really looks a bit different because there is a house on the right side of the road. It used to be red in the past. Today it's blue. And also the area on the left looks a bit more busy today than it used to in the past. But yeah, this is exactly the same place like in the movie scene 37 years ago. And well, before we finally leave Brownsville, there is one last place I want to show you, which is a bit outside the city center, even though I can't really show it to you because this place is private property. It's this house right here, right next to the street. In the backyard of this house, they have filmed this scene right here where the older guys get their own tattoos. All of that happens in the backyard, which looks a bit like a junkyard and well if you take a closer look this place still looks a bit like a junkyard today there are still some old damaged cars standing around here but what we can also see is the backyard today definitely looks much cleaner than it used to 37 years ago yeah, unfortunately, there are also a few more movie locations we can't visit today uh, because they are private property. Um, for example, there is Vern's house with a famous veranda, which is, by the way, not in Brownsville. It's a few kilometers away from here, uh, but it actually makes no sense to go there because I've checked that on Google Street View and uh, you can't even see the house or the veranda from the street. So, uh, yeah, we will skip that. Uh, we will also skip Gordy's house, um, uh, which you can't see that much in the movie anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, it makes no sense to go there because you can't uh, really look in the garden and the scene you, you see there in the movie. Movie. Um, yeah, it makes no sense. So we will also skip that. But yeah, there are two or three more movie locations. We at least should have a quick look uh, to see how they have changed within the past 37 years. And uh, yeah, that's where we're going now. So here we are at the next shooting location. This is the place where Gordy buys food in the movie uh, because the whole group <laughs> forgot to bring food. So he goes to a little shop uh, and buys ham for 150. And uh, well, that scene has been filmed over here. There's only one problem. The little shop doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Yeah, this is how the scene looked like in the movie. We can see the famous shop, which already looked quite old in the movie, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and well, this is how it looks like today in reality. There is nothing going on here anymore. There is no building anymore. There is just a traffic sign at this place. And nothing reminds of this famous movie scene anymore. However, we can do a little time travel via Google Street View. This is how this place looked like in September 2008. We can see the house is already abandoned and looks quite bad. Then in August 2011, it looked even worse. Look at all those bushes surrounding this house. And then in July 2019, this famous shop from Stand By Me finally is gone. Well, and today, you can actually buy this property and there are signs standing here. So if you want to live in that famous supermarket from the movie Stand By Me or build a new one here, well, go for it. <laughs> you can actually.
The next place on the list is the junkyard you can see in the movie Stand By Me, which is a very dangerous place and a scary place because there is this junkyard owner uh, who's a very angry man and his dog Chopper who allegedly bites balls. So I just went there and to be honest I was a bit afraid to do that <laughs> because I only know the scene from the movie and how it looks like in the movie. Well I just went there, I parked my car at the street very carefully, I went out of the car, I took my phone and I took a few pictures of the junkyard and then the owner of the junkyard came <laughs> and plot twist he's a very friendly man <laughs> yeah he asked me what i'm doing here i said well i'm just a fan of the movie stand by me sorry for disturbing uh, can i do a few recordings here and he said oh, yeah of course no problem however i didn't do really detailed uh, recordings uh, in front of this junkyard uh, and also not on the property itself um, but here's what i recorded and uh, well let's compare the scenes and this is it, the famous gate we all know from the movie with a lot of signs on it, no trespassing, keep out, stuff like that. Well, and this is how it looks like here today in reality. There's still a gate with a lot of signs on it, no visitors beyond this point, no parking and also no trespassing, so basically nothing is allowed here and you should definitely not enter this junkyard. However, the gate we can see here in reality is not the gate we can see in the movie Stand By Me. And how do I know that? Well, if you take a look at this scene right here when the boys jump over the gate, we can see a huge forest in the background. And on this side where I'm standing right now, there is no forest right behind me. So I think there is another gate on the other side of the junkyard, which is still private property. And I think that's the place they have filmed those scenes, because in this scene we can see this forest in the background and I think it's this forest over here that is still here in reality. Okay, and now it's time to show you the last shooting location for today, which is again a bridge, like the first shooting location. This time it's the red bridge that you can see in the movie when Gordy and his friends start their journey on the rails. These are the rails. <laughs> they are a walking path meanwhile and this is the famous bridge. Yeah, but I think before we have a closer look at the bridge, let's take a look at this scene first. This is the first scene we can see from this place in the movie. The four boys go on the rails and they start their journey and that has been filmed believe it or not, from over here. Also at this place, the railroad tracks today are a hiking trail, not with volcanic rock, this time with asphalt. You can also ride the bike here. And this place we can see here in the movie and also in reality, obviously in the past used to be some kind of a station for freight trains. You can see a lot of wagons here in the background in the movie scene. Today, this place is a parking space for cars. You can park your car here and then you can start your hike on the famous stand by me railroad track. This railroad track, by the way, was founded when gold and silver mining was still a very huge thing in this region here in Oregon. However, when the railroad track was finished, gold and silver mining was stopped here and the railroad track more or less was useless. However, a few years later, this railroad track was used for the wood production in this region, just like in Chester Trinity National Forest. And since 1994, also this chapter is over and there are no trains running on this railroad track anymore. Today it's, like I said, a hiking path, the Roe River National Recreation Trail to be precise. And if you walk down this railroad track you will also find a few more shooting locations from the movie Stand By Me. And by the way, right beside this hiking trail you will also find this historic bridge. A bridge that reminds me of another famous Stephen King movie. You know which movie I mean? If you do, write a comment down below. <laughs> 
Yeah, and here it finally is the famous bridge from the movie Stand By Me. And as we can see here, it still looks exactly the same like it did 37 years ago. Even though there is a paved road now and no railroad tracks anymore. Also, the bridge today has a railing that was not here 37 years ago. There is a small stream right next to the bridge that you can't see in the movie, but it's super idyllic here. And also, this movie scene is just super idyllic. I just love it. You can see the long, long way ahead in the background. The guys have to walk. And this feeling is still here 37 years later, even though the railroad track doesn't exist anymore today. Okay guys, that was my movie location tour of Stand By Me and that was also my last video from the USA. Actually, I still have one week left before I go back home, um, but this week I will spend without you. <laughs> yeah, I actually booked a few more days in Shasta Trinity National Forest because I liked it so much. The nature was so great over there. Yeah, and then I will go back to Los Angeles and then I will fly back home to Germany. Um, I hope you liked this movie location tour. I hope you liked my whole USA series. If you did, then please give a thumbs up. You can also hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any upcoming video. And if you'd like to support me and my work, you can also do that uh, on Patreon, for example or you can become a channel member on my YouTube channel. Then you will get exclusive stuff and new videos before everyone else. For example, I will tell you all the addresses of the shooting locations um, if you want to visit them yourself. And uh, also you will get uh, new videos before everyone else. So you should definitely check that out. That was a really beautiful vacation in the USA with ups and downs. Um, there were places that I didn't like that much. There were places that were stunning, beautiful, like the places of Stand By Me. I've seen them on television so many times. Now I finally could see them in real life. And maybe someday, in a few years, when I'm an old man, I will sit in my room, in my office, right in front of my computer, I'm typing some stuff, and then I will think, I never had a vacation like that one ever again. Jesus, does anyone? <laughs>